Do I look like uh, Do I look like Nightcrawler from X Men? No, I'm not that type of dark yet. No. All right, cool. One of the scariest things that could ever happen to me is losing my baby. I call this a uh, beautiful 2005 Mazda, little Sabrina, because uh, they both take a lot of money from me. Oh yeah, yeah, we need an oil change, like desperately. Sometimes if you don't maintain something, it can get very, very scary eventually. But that's why we take these preventative measures. Boom, 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 there we go. So I'm not gonna lie, talking about scary, I've spent two hours down here trying to get this thing off. I even got really clever to like use all of my strength to get, I, I did it. I did it. It took me two hours, but I did it. Oh yeah, that is scary. When the oil is as black as me inside of the shade, then yeah, that is completely scary. Almost as scary as the opponent will face when we show them this insane zombie deck that turns everything into zombies and uses Baron de Flor. It's not Italiano, but it's honorary Italiano for right now. Without further ado, let me go ahead and uh, fix this whole little situation here. And uh, we'll show you this zombie deck profile for the October 2021 format. That is so much better to actually be away from the really scary thing, which is Sabrina holding my camera and more on to the next scary thing for the opponent, Zombie World. Now, Zombie World is not only one of my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh decks, it's a deck that I always go back for time after time again, no matter the format. Uh, actually, a couple of weeks ago, I did a Zombie World deck profile, not necessarily this particular build, against a top meta deck. So if you want to see this build or a similar version of this deck being played out against a top meta deck, you can see how the deck can perform. I believe that this version is so much better. There are some significant changes that I made within this version as opposed to the last version. And one is the exclusion of hand traps. The next is we don't play cross out designator. And thirdly is the inclusion of the zombie engine and the full combo that will blow your mind that sets up so many negations. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So allow me to explain some things beforehand. I do think that this deck is a very, very solid rogue deck. I don't think that it's like a tier one deck or anything, but it can battle those tier one decks and give them complete fits. Making all monsters in the field and graveyard zombie can really win you some games against some of the top meta decks. But ultimately, I think that this is a really, really fun deck. Zombie has always been one of those great rogue decks that can take on the top meta, depending on the meta, and um, has gotten some really insane support. With all that being said, another thing I do want to say is that I got this map from InfinityGamingTCG.com. So in case you want to get your Dama Mamas, then that's exactly where I got it from. Starting off with the main board, our zombie engine is going to be fairly short, sweet, and simple. Three copies of the Brains Unizombie. Being able to proc zombie monsters into the graveyard, that's going to be either Necro or Banshee, or your glow up bloom sometimes, and then eventually getting into your Doom King Balladrock. That is it for the Zombie World engine as opposed to two copies of Zombie World. And again, I decided to keep this short, sweet, and simple for a few reasons. The first is because while Mizuki is really good, there was actually times where I wanted to fit Mizuki in this deck. There wasn't necessarily a card, excuse me, that I really wanted to revive with Mizuki that was inside of the main board, meaning that I had to dedicate resources to summon the card and then only then in later turns would Mizuki bring it back. Another thing that you may notice is the exclusion of Shirinui Solitaire and only Unizombie. I don't think that Shirinui Solitaire is a bad Yu-Gi-Oh card, but it's definitely in a bad spot right now. Being able to be stopped by Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring, Infinite Impermanence, and Infect Failure, just basically any hand trap will essentially end your turn. That and I already have six ways to get in my combo. Unizombie's job is to get Necro or Banshee, and Unizombie plus an additional card or Necro or Banshee plus an additional card is already full combo. One thing I do want to explain is the one copy of Glow Bloom. This is a card that I really wanted to play multiple copies of, but this is a card you absolutely do not want to see in your hand in this particular build because you want to be able to special summon it through Krishton Hakla Fibrix. Uh, Doom King Balladrock is very, very fine at one. You just need one in this particular build. And while Zombie World may look a little weird at two, especially since I'm playing Banshee, what a lot of players forget is that Banshee can protect Zombie World and is on the field. And more often than that, you don't need more than two copies of Zombie World anyways. One thing that I did wanted to get rid of is opening Zombie World in your opening hand 
because it's awkward. Like you don't really need it. You want to be able to combo into it and not necessarily open it. And that's why I play two. To complement the zombie engine, I actually play a very powerful engine that works so well with Zombie World. Um, instead of playing all of the hand traps, I decided to go with the Outlitch engine, which is two copies of Outlitch to Golden Lord, three copies of Curse Outland, one copy of Outlixer Black Awakening, three copies of Conquistador, two copies of Wakero, and three copies of Scarlet Sanguine with the Golden land forever now this is a pretty big outlet engine you could even argue that this is more of an outlet deck than a zombie world deck well i would like to disagree and it's for a few reasons first of all this zombie world engine is incredible but um you really don't want to play too many other zombie world cards so that's obviously why we don't play a lot secondly the outlet engine is actually an engine because not only does it allow you to propel inside of your game state they're all zombies it still plays under the zombie world rule so there's a couple of things I want to talk about. The first thing is Curse Outland. I'm so indifferent with this particular card. I feel like you could cut it for the uh, a card called Crackdown because it doesn't feel like a card that you necessarily need. And Crackdown is kind of bananas in here because you take your opponent's monster and it's treated as a zombie kind of, so you can kind of do some really cool things with it and it disrupts the opponent. So if you can't afford Crackdowns or probably want to try some of the traps, I would strongly suggest Crackdown as opposed to Curse Outland. But moving forward, all of these cards actually play off uh, all of your Outlitch monsters, you know, your Conks, your Wakeros. Um, they play off of another card that I was playing inside of this deck. Like I said, there was a spicy two card combo with Unizombie and Necro or Banshee that goes full combo. This actually plays uh, another role with these important cards. So I wanted the, the particular card that I'm talking about to have multiple uses. And that's what this provides. I know it may sound a little confusing, but I'll explain it a little bit later. Golden Land Forever is also a really powerful card in here because there are times where you have outlets to Golden Lord and Doom King Balladrock with your Vampire Sucker, and you can use Golden Land Forever to tribute your Doom King Balladrock and negate an opponent's card, and then Balladrock comes back. Regardless, the Outlitch engine is just extremely powerful over the hand traps because this allows you to play into a grind, whereas after you use your hand traps or after you have your hand traps in your hand, they don't necessarily allow you to progress forward, which is why I decided to go with these over those particular cards. Moving forward, uh, there are going to be some cards that really help with the extension. Uh, three copies of Pot of Prosperity. This deck doesn't necessarily need its extra deck as much, so Prosperity is fairly free. But if you guys cannot afford Pot of Prosperity, uh, there really isn't a substitute as duality doesn't do anything for your deck as you still need the special summon. So I would suggest just cutting Pot of Prosperity and possibly just running more traps. Now I did mention Crackdown as a card that you could play. Um, you could also just play more Golden Land cards uh, like maybe a third Hakuto, and that will put you at 40 since this is a 42 card deck. The super secret spice that I've been talking to you guys about, and I feel like this is super secret spice in so many decks and people don't pay attention though, is Ready Fusion and Instant Fusion. Now, Necro Banshee or Unizombie plus these two cards are full combo, but also as an Exceed play for your, um, your uh, Golden Land cards, and also a Synchro play for your Golden Land cards. Again, I'll be able to show you that combo a little later, but it's kind of ridiculous how powerful and how good this card is. But moving forward, that's all for our extension cards plus our searchability. For our hand traps, I decided to go with Forbidden Chalices over Forbidden Droplet. And the reason why I decided to go with Chalices over Droplet is because I didn't want to have to diminish resources to get my opponent's boards or break my opponent's boards. I just wanted to be able to interact with those certain cards that want to interact with me. Two copies of Super Polymerization. This card is obviously godly in this deck where everything is zombies. You can fuse your opponent's board. Uh, two copies of Infinite Impermanence. I realize that Infinite Impermanence is one of the better hand traps because not only is it a great going first or going second card, it can also open up to stop your opponent's cards like Invoked Mechaba and uh, Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess. And then lastly, this is simply just the best trap card in Yu-Gi-Oh! in my opinion. Uh, Solemn Strike allows you to play second because what you do is you set all your trap cards with your Solemn Strike. And then as your opponent is trying to interact with you, you can strike their most important card. And of course, you, you know your opponent more than likely won't be able to respond to Solemn Strike. Moving forward for the extra deck, this is actually not an unfinished product, but there are some cards that I feel that are really good in here that you may want to consider. If you can't afford access code talker, don't worry about it. You can cut it. It's not that, you know, it's not that mandatory. I do think that Nightmare Unicorn is fairly good with the deck. Predoblant Vert is another card that you can cut if you can't afford it. It's perfectly fine. This is just to send super polymerization to the graveyard. And then Vampire Sucker is a card that you may want to consider playing multiple copies of if you play Crackdown inside of this deck instead. 
Kristan Hockle Fabrics is important for the combo, so strongly urge you to get a copy of that if you can. And then Link Kribo is also really important for the combo as well. For the fusion monsters, of course, one outlets the Mad Golden Lord. This actually came up in testing where I fused into this card using my own monsters, playing against a deck that wasn't good against Super Poly, but pretty much had to struggle against this card. Starving Venom Dragon, because you can make Predaflat Vert Anaconda make your opponent's monster dark, and fuse your Vert with the monster that you made dark into this at worst case scenario. Dragon Necro, because you can turn everything into zombies. And the Monster of the Hour, the card that Konami promised us would be deadly in 2017, is the best fusion monster in Yu-Gi-Oh! Sea Monster of Theseus. This is a level 5 zombie monster, and it's kind of incredible because it's a tuner, and of course I'll explain to that a little later. You could run Konami Vamana. I felt that this was way better than running a light monster like uh, the Musician King. Um, to make Clan Stellar Pleiades because this card is a disruption and it, you know you don't have to switch up your extra deck slots, you can just keep it Theseus. Uh, I've made this card uh, once. I used Formula Synchron and Outlets to Golden Lord to make it, and it's kind of good. And then Baron de Flor can be made in so many different ways with this deck. I'll show you in the combos actually. All right, so the zombie world combo that may blow your mind is going to require either Unizombie and Re Ready Fusion or Instant Fusion or Necro or Banshee and Ready Fusion or Instant Fusion. This combo is actually what this deck was built off of originally and is the reason why this deck, I feel that this deck is just so powerful. The first thing I'm gonna do is normal summon my Unizombie and then activate its effect to send Necro or Banshee to the graveyard. And it kind of doesn't matter when you activate Necro or Banshee, I'm gonna go ahead and activate it right now to activate Zombie World. Again, doesn't really matter. Uh, then I'm going to follow up by activate it Ready Fusion to be able to special summon my Seed Monster of Theseus. Now, the cool thing about Christian Hockle Fabrics is that one of them doesn't have to be a tuner, which makes it a super synchro monster. <laughs> so you can literally just link both of these off into your Christian Hockle Fabrics and trigger its effect. Using the effect of Christian Hockle Fabrics, you'll special summon Glow Up Bloom. Now here's where you would have to activate Necro World Banshee before you get rid of Glow Up Bloom, but that's perfectly fine since we already have it on the field. We'll link off Glow Up Bloom into our Link Karibo. Triggering Glow Bloom's effect. We'll banish the Glow Bloom to be able to special summon Doom King Balor Drock from our decks to our side of the field. And then in our end sequence, we will link off both our Link Kribo and our Doom King Balor Drock for a Vampire Sucker. Now, as you guys can see, this was done with two cards, meaning that we'll have three additional cards left in our hand, but this is where it gets really fun. During our opponent's standby phase, we'll trigger the effect of Doom King Balor Drock it will special summon itself to the side of the field, and then Vampire Sucker's effect will proc to draw a card. Now, if your opponent does have cards on the field that you want to get rid of, you can also use the effect of Doom King Balor Drock to be able to banish a zombie monster on the field or graveyard because a zombie monster was activating its effect, or you can save it for whatever interaction that your opponent does have. Again, Doom King Balor Drock can still negate another zombie monster if you choose, so you basically get, like I said, two disruptions with Balor Drock. Also, the next thing I want to talk about is that Christian Hockle Fibers can activate its effect uh, during your opponent's main phase or battle phase. I'm pretty sure it's main phase or battle phase. I don't think I've ever done it in a battle phase, but you can use it in the main phase or battle phase to special summon Formula Synchron. Formula Synchron to draw an additional card that puts you back at five cards, the five cards that you started with in your hand. And then you can use the effect of Formula Synchron to Synchro Summon with the Doom King Balor Truck into Baron de Flor. Now, this is kind of incredible because not only did you get those two cards that you that you used in the beginning of your combo back, you got one, two disruptions with Doom King Ballad Rock, and you get a third disruption with Better on the Floor. You also get Zombie World, which makes everything zombies, and that's a problem for some of the top decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's say you already used the effect with Better on the Floor, and you pass it back to your turn. Now, of course, you'll be able to special summon Doom King Ballard Rock to your side of the field and draw an additional card. But what's even better is that you can use the effect of Better on the Floor to return itself to the extra deck to be able to special summon Formula Synchron. You should already know where this is going right here. You can then Synchro Summon right back into the Better on the Floor right again and, and are able to use its effect yet again for another huge play. Keep in mind this whole time you are wrecking your opponent's brains, gaining advantage through the effect of Vampire Sucker and Doom King Ballard Rock continuously summoning itself back to the side of the field because again, on the next turn, you can summon Doom King Ballard Rock and draw an additional card. Now this is literally what this zombie deck is built on, but I trust that you'll have your own take of this deck, your own text, your own methods to make it even stronger. 
I'm just here to share this information with you because I am a zombie enthusiast, just like more than likely you are. And that is all that I have for the zombie world deck profile that will blow your mind. Of course, if you did like this video, then go ahead and check out these other ones because they are insane. And of course, I'll catch you on the next one.